This project is one of the most transformative projects that Vancouver has seen in its history, and very likely in all of Canada. Not only because of its breadth, comprising of about 10 and a half acres, housing about 6,000 units of rental housing. Also from the perspective of economic reconciliation, efforts towards sustainability and community development on a whole new scale that it really hasn't been seen before. Something that is innovative, that is forward thinking, that is not seen before. What are some of the challenges that we're going through? Some of the challenging tectonic features that are being embedded, uh, the infrastructure that's being put in place. These are things that are not seen every day. So when you open your doors to the community and let them in, it not only brings learning and knowledge, but it actually starts building bridges and a path forward. These are ideas and concepts that I think are important to be taught throughout the project. And more than anything, I think it's going to be great to have people be able to come in and see the nation at work, see the jobs that are being created, see the love and the passion of what it feels like when you're building your own home. The mandate since the beginning was that, okay, we need to design a project that really pushes uh, the standards and can achieve the lowest carbon emissions as possible. So early on, yeah, we, re we realized that we needed to use triple glazing here. The project team did lots of thermal analysis, calculations, and always trying to make sure that the design was hitting the targets that we needed. This curtain wall was custom made, so we didn't use any off-the-shelf components. We really wanted to focus on reducing the amount of material on the project, and for that the structural engineers were figuring out, okay, how can we do that? So some of the measures they established were that most of the columns actually go all the way from the top to the foundations, and that, of course, helped to reduce the amount of uh, transfer slabs and transfer beams. Another strategy that was used is actually the reduction in vehicle parking. Centrally located, well served, um, there is no need to have these tremendous parking stalls and underground parking, so they've limited this to 10% ratio. Instead, the reliance is now on alternative transportation, new paradigms and in green infrastructure and transit integration, such as a transit hub that we're building on site. We're providing the largest bike hub in Canada's history, housing about 4,500 bikes below grade. It'll have repair shops and, and services, and a community built such as a cycle club and bike cafes. So the core technology for this project, as with pretty much all our projects now, is a heat pump. A heat pump basically uses electricity, which is clean electricity in this province, to move energy from one place to another. For this project, we're basically moving energy from the chilled water loop, which is running at around 5 degrees C, to the heating loop, which is running at 60 degrees C. One unit of power from hydro is 2.7 units of cooling. Those 2.7 units added to the one unit of electricity result in 3.7 units of heating. So in terms of efficiency, that's basically 370% heating efficiency. If you compare that to a gas boiler, which is around 90%. As with any heat pump, the key question is where is the heat coming from? In this case, our heat pump is taking energy from the chill water loop. That chill water loop is providing cooling to the building. So all that cooling energy is recovered, put into the heating system for heating domestic hot water production. So we need a second source of energy tying into the Metro Vancouver sewer force main. So running under Chestnut Street, right past the development, is a very large force main that takes sewage from about, about half of downtown Vancouver. We're pulling sewage out, connecting it with a heat exchanger to our chill water system, cooling it down a bit, putting it back in again. Right now is a very interesting time in the context of Vancouver. Vancouver is coming to a time where it's seeing a lot of its challenges in terms of housing and how it meets the services of increased density finding its limitations, it's only really through the possibility of doing these type of large-scale urban developments that are integrated with a community and a very forward-thinking and progressive attitude that sets forward a new path towards Vancouver. Climate resiliency, we're thinking 
not just 10 or 20 years ahead. We're, we're talking about 100 to 150 years ahead. 